I'm walking on a tight rope, arms stretched to the sides, like an acrobat with no safety net. I'm suspended between heaven and earth, crazy winds are blowing while I try to keep my balance. Any little mistake, I fly. Hi, my name is Mira Awad. I'm a singer and songwriter from a Palestinian village in the north of Israel. The text I just recited is from a song I wrote called Bahlawan, which in Arabic means acrobat. I'm here today to tell you why I've been walking the tight rope since I was born. Not a physical rope, a metaphorical one. I was born in an Arab village to a mixed family. My father is Palestinian and my mother is Bulgarian. My parents are both highly educated and liberal people. My surrounding was not religious nor extreme in any way. But still, when compared to the Western way of life, it was somewhat conservative. From an early age, I knew the difference between boys and girls. Boys were allowed to wear short trousers, play football, and climb trees. Girls were advised to cover up, learn knitting, and help in the kitchen. You probably figured it out, I preferred climbing trees. I remember one time in the second grade, I invited a boy from my class over to my house to play. He started laughing at me, out loud, in front of the whole class. The other kids pointed out their fingers and started calling me Hassan Sabe, a tomboy. And the girls, what? Well, the girls. They started gossiping about me behaving promiscuously promiscuous in the second grade. How promiscuous of me to want to be friends with a boy. When boys in my community expressed themselves and their needs, they were being manly. When girls expressed themselves and their needs, they were being disobedient. I resented the double standard. I hated the separate sets of rules, but I couldn't break away, not just yet. So what I did, is what all women in conservative communities do. I learned how to walk the tight rope. I learned how to keep the balance between what is expected from me by my surroundings and what I really wanted in life. Losing the balance to, each, to either side had consequence. If you disobey society, you face slander at the very least. And believe me, that really affects your social status. In the worst case scenario, you might encounter violence, even murder. On the other hand, if you keep pleasing your surroundings while neglecting yourself, postponing your own needs, that's a recipe for unhappiness. More and more women are reaching the conclusion that if they want to fulfill themselves, if they yearn to obtain individual freedom, the liberty to decide their own fates, there's probably going to be a price tag attached. These so-called rebels often end up being expelled from their conservative communities, either by choice or by less of a choice, and are discharged into the modern and enlightened general Israeli community that welcomes them with open arms. We do not judge you according to your gender here. You're free to do as you want with your body and mind. And I tell you from experience, the idea of finding an environment that will not examine my every word, every move, every thought, that will not judge me for things like what I choose to wear or whom I choose to spend my time with until what hour is pure bliss. I can finally drop the balancing act and start living my life, right? Wrong. When I first arrived in Tel Aviv, Israel's most cosmopolitan city, I found a little apartment just off of Dizing of Swear and I wanted to take it. The real estate agent took out a pen, clicked it open, and asked for my full name and ID number. I remember his face when I said the Awad. He clicked the pen again and started stuttering. I mean, you seem like a very nice person, but the landlord, the landlord specifically said no Arabs. It was then when it hit me. I did not get away 
from the struggle for the right to be who I am. I just moved from a community that discriminated me according to gender to one that does so based on nationality. The gender strife simply replaced by a political one. I was back on that tightrope. In 2009, I was preparing to represent Israel in the Eurovision Song Contest, together with an Israeli Jewish singer, Noah, with whom I've been collaborating for over 13 years now. I was the first Arab to ever represent Israel in such a contest. But following the trouble I faced, I hope I'm not the last. You see, the preparations tragically coincided with the Israeli military operation on Gaza. Following that, I was immediately brand branded by the Arab community as the sellout, the traitor. They were convinced I was a tool in the hands of the Israeli propaganda. Don't be the fig leaf for the country that's butchering your own people, they wrote in a very painful petition that roamed the web. I faced personal threats and continuous boycotts. At the same time, me being an advocate for anti-violence, I expressed my views regarding the escalation of violence and revealed my strong reservations regarding some of the actions of the Israeli army in Gaza. And although I also fingered Hamas, I was nevertheless branded by the Jewish community as the enemy from within. Right-wing parliament members demanded I was denied the, the right to represent Israel. Some even demanded I be denied my citizenship. I got hate mail from Israelis calling me a terrorist, like all my Arab friends, and telling me to go back to where I came from, forgetting that I'm exactly where I came from. There are numerous examples for this. Tippy-toeing between identities. After all, I've been in the balancing business for quite a while, trying to please all sides. But you know how it goes. You can't please all people all of the time. You can please some of them some of the time, but take it from me. You mainly get tired trying. Enlightenment came one day when a young woman came up to me after a show and asked, in the translation of your song, Bahlawan, you say, any little mistake, I fly. You meant might fall, right? Wrong. This song is about me realizing that I had been gazing down from above that high rope, calculating my steps, trying to anticipate where the next blow is going to come from, while in fact, if you ask professional acrobats, they will tell you that the trick for keeping a good balance is quite simple. Don't ever look down. Look forward. Choose a focusing point. Be there where your consciousness and your body will follow. When you let go of the need to please, when you understand that the only loyalty you can actually deliver is the loyalty to your own values, when you realize that the only truth out there is subjective, when you take the leap of faith toward yourself, you do not fall. You do not fall. You soar. You grow wings and you fly. I got married recently. It was not easy to find someone who can coexist with the abundance of things that I am. <laughs> but I did. My husband is eight years younger than I am. He comes from Ukraine and is half Christian, half Jewish. An acrobat on his own account, a Bahlawan. Our kids will be mega Bahlawans. From day one, I will be teaching them the rule for a good balance, encouraging them to look forward and not down, to search within, not without. And I'll fiercely back them up as they try to reach out for the things they want in life. But secretly, silently, I will also be saying a prayer that the humankind be more tolerant so that my children's magnificent complex identities would be something to celebrate and nothing to apologize for. And so that their balancing acts would be 
slightly safer. When I put Bahlawan to music, I chose a very specific beat, the five eights. The six eights, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, is like a dance. Everything is in place, everything is in harmony, in flow. You take out one eighth, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, something goes out of balance. Two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Mashi ala outar mashdure. Idai ala jna mamdure. Bala idaman wala shabakit aman bahlawa. بلا أي ضمان ولا شبكة أمان بهلوان. Thank you.